Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to go over the longer 3D LK4 Pro. Stay tuned. So here we have the LK4 Pro from Longer 3D. And there are some things in this that are actually pretty darn cool. First of all, I absolutely love the touchscreen. It is one of the best touchscreen interfaces that I've ever seen for a 3D printer. It's very smartphone-like, and it's just as responsive. I'm not going to turn it on. I'll get to that in a minute. Why? <laughs> but um, they've also improved this since the U30 Pro, which is made by Longer 3D for AlphaWise, basically the same printer. Um, they have added flow rate to the touchscreen, so you can now adjust flow rate live on the touchscreen. You'll notice some slight differences. These nice smooth rails, the extrusions. So these, this part of the extrusion doesn't have the V-slot since it doesn't need it. It gives it a very clean look and probably makes it stronger too. You'll also notice all the machining, very clean. They did a pretty good job on that. Okay. Now there are a few things that give me a problem, very minor things. Um, I don't like the bolts that attach the vertical gantry to the base. You only have four millimeters of thread connecting these two parts together, and that is not good. You need to change out those five by twenties for five by thirties so that you'll have 14 millimeters of thread attaching these two pieces together. You only have four millimeters of steel thread connecting to four millimeters of aluminum thread. That's... I am actually genuinely afraid that if I were to grab this by the top brace and pick it up, if I were to hit something, that these threads would give way. Um, so far, it's holding, but I would like to see that improved. Um, that's as simple as replace those 5x20s with 5x30s. The instructions also had some pretty annoying issues. Um, they correctly, in my opinion, mark all the bags with the size of the screws. So that bag of screws said 5x20. The problem is the instructions don't say 5x20. <laughs> the instructions just show you a picture of the bolt. Well, actually, the instructions for that said 25. And then there's a picture diagram up top that says 25 and then shows you a picture of the bolt. I'd rather you put 5x20 there so that you could just simply look for the bag that says 5x20. Um, that would be a better solution to that. So you can see they mark it, bolt 25 here, needed to attach the verticals to the base. And then they have a diagram up here which shows you the different bolts and items it comes with. Um, these items are self-explanatory, spring and knob, but these are not so self-explanatory. What I would rather see is that right here next to 25, it says 5x20. Okay, same thing here. Next to 25, right below it says 5x20. This way you can just look for the bag that says 5 by 20. I would much rather they do that. Uh, this is not really a problem with the printer so much as something that all users should check when a printer travels 15,000 miles around the world. My bed was crooked. And that's because this entire arm here, change view angle, there we go. This entire Y-axis rail was crooked. And the reason it was crooked was because these bolts here came loose. Those four right there. No big deal. Straighten it up until it looks straight and then tighten those four bolts. Parts cooling on this printer could use a little help. I am not impressed by that. I would rather see you mount a, um, a 5x15 or 5x, what is it? A 15x50 blower, I think it is. 15x50 blower. Standard blower motor. Put a blower motor right on the side here and a proper duct. This duct and this fan does not work very well. It's very noisy and it's inadequate cooling. I mean, it works, but you know, you see a little droopy butt when you print something like this. You can see at the bottom there, it's got a little droopy butt. That's because the cooling wasn't quite up to snuff. Not a big deal, but I would like to see this switch flipped over 180 degrees. So that this tab is facing down instead of up. Because these tabs, if you pull on this, this tab will pull off. It'll come off of that. It's only um, squeeze fit right in there like a clip. Okay? And if any wire, filament, anything grabs a hold of this, it's just going to pull that right off. So if you flip that switch over, just take those two bolts out at the factory. You can't do this at home because this is soldered in. But at the factory, flip that over 180 degrees so that this open end here, this tab part, is facing down. And that will eliminate that problem, or at least most of that problem. Because facing down, things are less likely to grab a hold of it. 
I'm still not super pleased with threading the bolts that hold the x-axis to these plates threading them with um, the aluminum because if you look at the end of this there's not a whole lot of metal aluminum metal holding that together there you have like three millimeters worth of material that that is threaded into so if you over tighten these bolts or the bolts holding this on you will strip this um, so be careful with that I would like to see them start using steel inserts in the aluminum so that you're um, threading steel into steel even better a steel insert inside of this piece here with the bolts coming in through the front recessed of course so that they don't interfere with the motion of the head so that you are basically compressing the aluminum from the bolt head to the steel insert inside of the bracket that would be the strongest way to handle that and require the least amount of machining this is an error on my part when you put these zip ties on here to secure the belt make sure the actual heads of the zip tie are facing down and not up I put mine facing up so it snags on the end of the extrusion that's my error not theirs that's nothing wrong with the kit so that's just a little advice to people building this make sure the heads stick out the bottom here so that when you slide it all the way to the end stop those heads don't snag on the end of the extrusion there this wire loom floats in the wind here I would like to see that secured what you can do is have this bracket actually come out like this a little bit have a little piece change the shape of it basically so instead of having this angled edge have it bulge out a little bit and have a hole right there that hole will be so that you can zip tie this to the bracket to secure this so it's not floating in the wind because if this ever snags on something it might yank one of these cords out and that would not be healthy feeder unit is quite nice i love the fact that the filament sensor is mounted almost directly inside uh, right on the end of the hot end i would like to see a piece of ptfe tube coming off of that that will both make it easier to insert filament and also act as um a consumable so that when the filament coming from the top here doesn't dig into the plastic which it will over time do so making the entry hole for the filament large enough to accept a small two inch piece of ptfe tube that the user could then just stick in there will make it easier to insert filament because that hole is pretty hard to find and also act as a consumable to protect this end I like the fact that it's got a nice beefy feeder unit with a nice beefy spring that is well designed for a basic feeder unit I have no complaints about that I really love the improvements made to the rear end of this machine so as you can see here you have your your standard H assembly for a printer of this type except this one has feet which I actually really like a lot of people don't like the feet I love the feet because the feet make for a nice clean edge here it looks beautiful and it lifts it up off the table and allows you to put all of the parts underneath the power supply is not exposed there is an insulator if you'll notice when you take apart a power supply there's a um a plastic electrical insulating sheet kind of like a sheet of paper but it's made of plastic that insulates the electrical board inside from the housing the aluminum housing of the power supply that's facing up so these holes are not open okay all the open holes and the fan holes are on the bottom which means you don't have a problem with anything falling into the power supply or anything falling into your control box your brain box assembly because nothing is open from the top excellent they took that advice i love the fact that this stamped um assembly for attaching the power supply and the brain box is one piece all the way across and it connects the two halves that stops this h assembly from twisting because it, when it's only attached here in the middle it can shift it can be twisted during assembly well this stops that because now you have a full box effectively by having this bracket this assembly the sheet steel go all the way across one piece from side to side and bolt into the frame assembly very very strong very very rigid i like that a lot all the brackets are beefy as crap i mean these are what three millimeter brackets they're three millimeters thick and unlike the previous one the power supply is now firmly attached with two three millimeter brackets that bolt into the extrusion and into the power supply housing so while this end does float you can see i can move it there i have to push pretty hard to make that move that is nicely secured good job on that they're using all available wires for your heater connection here so you don't have to worry about drawing too many amps through too small a connection the 
z-axis assembly went together perfectly i was able to drop the rod through the brass bushing up here and the collet right there oh, come on right there and the lead screw fell right into the hole inside the coupler i did not have to shift push or pull anything it just dropped right into the hole which means their physical alignment between stepper frame coupler lead screw and collet up here is all correct all perfectly aligned i did have a minor issue where this frame is not quite square it is one millimeter further apart up top here than it is down here and that is something they are going to want to look at at the factory it's not enough to cause a problem i'm having zero issues with this but that is something they're going to want to pay attention to because quality control worsens and that becomes bigger that's a problem but one millimeter does not seem to cause any problems i was able to adjust these wheels without an issue and everything lined up and moved smoothly here's another view of those excellent brackets including the connection to the brain box containment sheet metal on the back here as you can see all the openings are on the bottom which means nothing can fall in from above there is your voltage switch to change between 115 and 230. The printer came with glass with a um, build tack clone surface on top. We call it fake tack. Um, it works fine. Um, I don't like that. I prefer a flex plate. So I, of course, replaced mine with a magnetic surface and a steel flex plate. This is one that Creality sent me, but I already had one on the printer it was sent for. So I used it on this one since it was the correct size. I'll eventually replace this with a piece of Wham Bam flex plate because I want the PC surface, not this PEI surface. PEI surface works fine, but I prefer being able to turn off the heat bed. That's just a personal preference of mine. And with PEI, you cannot turn off the heat bed. The belt did require adjustment from the factory, which it was not a problem. Unbolt, unloosen these two bolts here and these two bolts here, and this entire assembly moves back and forth. Pull it out nice and tight, tighten one of them, and you're good. Now the belt is tight enough. That could not maybe use a tiny bit tighter, but I think it's okay. This belt here is also adjusted. Loosen these two. You can see there's ovalized holes here that it slides in. So you loosen these two bolts, put your finger on here, push this out until it's nice and tight, and then tighten one of the bolts. And that'll hold it in place and allow you to tighten the other bolt. Do make sure this arm does not pivot up or down so that your belt does not rub on the inside. Otherwise, no issues. And that brings us to the one major problem that I did have with the printer. It's not like a, a fatal problem but it is an issue these wheels were not round um, one of these i have to take it apart and replace these wheels they offered to send me wheels i told them not to bother i have plenty of wheels um, but one of these wheels was ovalized so one of these wheels is acting as an eccentric so instead of being round it's oval shaped and that causes this entire head to actually move up and down as the printer head moves left and right you, when you're leveling the bed, when you when you have it down here and you're leveling it and you push the head to the side, you can actually see the gap between the bed and the nozzle change as this head is pushed up and down by that ovalized wheel. I did verify the bed is absolutely flat, so it's not that. This is actually moving up and down because one of these wheels is not quite round. Uh, mine, the difference was small enough that I was able to compensate with an average distance and it worked fine. I've had no problem making prints, but that is something they should keep an eye on in QC. And that brings us to the last issue that I have with the printer. This printer is very quiet. It has silent stepper drivers. It works fine. I've had no lost step issues, no major problems. I've made many prints with it. I'm gonna show you those in a moment. Ah, longer 3D. You make a quiet printer and then you have fans on this thing that turn this thing into a tornado. You should have called it the LK4 Tornado Pro <laughs> because every single fan on this machine is just a noise machine. In fact, let me show you. You ready? Here's how quiet it is in here. Oh yeah, and that's before I even turn on the parts cooling fan, okay? So this fan's noisy and big time, this fan's noisy. So I will be replacing all of the fans on this machine with better fans. At the same time, replacing this with something a little more efficient. I will probably put a Creality style unit on here. Just cut this plate off or bend it down and cut it in half so I can use those screw holes and put a um, 
a 5015 50, blower fan on here with a proper cooler. This side is empty, so it is feasible to put dual coolers on here. I might even attempt to put a... Uh, these bolts do not look like they would line up, so a um, CR10 Ender 3 style shroud probably would not fit. Which is a pity. Um, but yeah, this thing needs better parts cooling and quiet fans. However, oh, let me show you this interface. You're going to love the UI on this printer. It is such a beautiful UI. And while you're printing, you have live access to controls. So, nozzle temperature, heat bed temperature, fan speed, feed rate, and nozzle flow rate. Thank you very much for adding that. I appreciate it. Flow rate comes in handy. Um, when you go to print... You select print and it comes up with a nice list. And amazingly, you can actually see a large portion of the file name. That's another change that I'm very happy that was made. So I can actually see the file name. And down here, it shows you more. I wonder, is it possible to show a small JPEG here of what the file will look like? That would be very, very cool. If, you could, if that could be integrated into Marlin as a standard feature so that the slicers could integrate dropping a small grayscale JPEG, you know, something easy to see for what it would actually look like, that would be pretty darn cool. But the interface on this machine is gorgeous. But we're going to have to turn this off so you can actually hear what I'm saying. Very, very, very nice UI. I love the UI on this printer. All right, here's the part a lot of people are looking for the prints that we got from the machine. Besides a little bit of droopy butt, the Groot Marvin came out fantastically. I have no complaints about that Marvin. Very, very nice, except for the lack of cooling. Although, even the key ring came out fantastically. No issue with the key ring. Next up, standard vase. This is all in Prusament Mystic Brown. This stuff does not look good on video. I need to work on lighting to make this stuff really shine up nice. But in person, this stuff is beautiful. It's like a, um, a brownish burgundy hybrid. It's very, very pretty. But there is our vase. Very little noise. The facets are very clean. I do not have much to complain about that. Then I also printed my barrel wrench. So this is the wrench I use to undo the standardized caps that are on the water barrels, kerosene barrels that I use. Those standard plastic barrels all use that kind of a connection on them. So I made a hybrid. This is two different people's objects that I cut pieces out of and put together to make myself a nice little wrench that came out very nicely. No complaints. Then I printed a Christmas ornament. And this came out really nice. I'm hoping I can show some of the layer detail on this, how nice it came out. Really pretty model. I did this, I believe, at 0.24 millimeter high. And then once I got to this top edge here, I switched to 0.12 millimeters so that this would come out much, much cleaner. And you need to face this way. It keeps going that way. I don't want it to go that way. <laughs> but very very pleased with how that came out this filament is beautiful then i printed a vase christmas tree and i love this one this looks like a sci-fi ish kind of thing it's very pretty i really wish i could make like a six foot tall one of these i would make that my actual christmas tree <laughs> so i think it's going to be a gold mine to eventually build a printer big enough so that i can print my own full-size christmas tree <laughs> <laughs> just why not <laughs> and then the print I'm super super happy about um, the fact that I found the model and um, uh, I'm gonna try to remember to put a link down below for where I got these models but someone finally made a nice highly detailed printable cat bus and the LK4 Pro did an excellent job recreating it so I now have my very own cat bus Oh yeah, I am super, super happy with that.
I am so going to make a giant one of these. Once I get my S5 out of the crate, hopefully by spring, I'm going to make a gigantic one of these. This is just awesome. I can now have a cat bus. So that's it. If you have any questions, they put them down below. How would I rate this printer? I would rate this printer a safe to buy. That means if you buy it, you will get, you should get a usable printer that requires a minimum amount of effort to make work properly, and it should work reasonably well. Um, as far as you know, a rating that takes months. <laughs> I never get it done. By the time I get done reviewing a printer like that, it's forgotten. So I just rate my printers safe to buy or not safe to buy. This printer, I will give it a safe to buy. Um, you won't be disappointed if you get it within the appropriate expectations of its price range, approximately $200 to $220 um, on sale at the time of this video posting. So any questions, put them down below. Um, this video is also for Longer 3D to help them improve the printer so they can hopefully make those small corrections to make a nice machine even nicer. That's it. You guys have a great day.